This is a gravity generator concept that I've been designing and building. The idea was conceived through studying gears and escapements. My interest in escapements wasn't based on the amazing designs of these mechanisms alone, nor how enjoyable they are to watch as their gears, springs, and weights move in precise rhythm and motion. It's because I look at mechanisms like this and picture them upscaled and connected to rotors filled with magnets passing through copper wiring generating electrical current. But then the idea of taking simple mechanisms like these that have been around for years and integrating them into something bigger that can produce electricity is definitely my cup of tea. If you haven't already subscribed to my backup channel, you can get to it at the URL above. If anything of importance ever disappears off this platform, look for it there. And if you haven't visited my other YouTube channel that features interesting topics that wouldn't fit the subject matter of this one, I invite you to do so. And for my more controversial videos, visit me at the URL above. With all of the chaos going on in the world today, it would be prudent to get yourself some storable food and provide yourself with a little peace of mind. There's a link to my favorite source of which in the description below. So many of us that are pursuing alternative energy solutions are always trying to reinvent the wheel. I don't think that's necessary. All we really need to do is combine various mechanisms that have been around for years into single systems that employ different types of mechanical advantage. I discovered not long ago when I built a pedal generator how simple it was to use gears to achieve high RPMs with fairly minimal effort. So then I thought, what if we eliminated the pedaling altogether and simply used a weight to turn the gears? If you connect enough gears together, the weight could power the mechanism for more than a day without being reset. Look at cuckoo clocks to understand the simplicity of this best, and then picture a much heavier weight turning a series of gears that turn an alternator which produces electrical current. The longer you wish to have the mechanism run without being restarted, the more gears you add, while balancing out the correct weight to keep the system running at the desired speed and efficiency. After designing most of the components of my gravity generator concept through rough sketches and eventually 3D models, I decided to search for gravity generators online to see what was out there and was pleasantly surprised to see there are a few different types and styles of gravity generators that have been built. They range from backyard projects to large-scale conceptual business proposals. Some of the larger scale pitches remind me more of how hydroelectric projects are put together. One of the biggest obstacles to building a gravity generator that is useful rather than simply a cute novelty that is of no real-world use, is the challenge of resetting the weight without it being more of a burden than the benefits that the system can produce while running. With mechanical advantage, it's simple. Just use pulleys. With the right system of pulleys, you could make 1,000 pounds of weight feel like 25 pounds. The trade-off is that you have to pull the wire that the weight is suspended from a greater distance. But the effort becomes so minimal that it's more than worth it. I haven't seen this exact method applied to any of the models I found in my research online, though I did find one particular design on YouTube that used pulleys in the opposite way to provide more time for the mechanism to run before the weights drop all the way down. If he used the pulley system to reset the weight though, he'd be able to add more weight. The added weight would provide more torque into the gears, which would allow him to add more gears, and his system would run for a longer duration. I applied mechanical advantage to the design of the alternator for the generator as well. If you build the rotor to function as a flywheel and connect it to a freewheel, the generator could continue producing electricity even while resetting the weight. For example, this is an 18 inch diameter by 1 quarter inch thick aluminum disc. I spun this with my hand and set a timer to see how long it would spin before coming to a complete stop. It spun for more than 15 minutes. Granted, once you attach magnets to a wheel and run those magnets through copper windings, even using the aluminum disc as a flywheel, there will be quite a bit of drag. The flywheel will be rotating a much higher RPM than hand spinning would provide, and it wouldn't take 15 minutes to reset the weight. So I believe everything will balance out once all the variables are worked out. Another thing I've been considering is power storage. It would seem much more prudent to store the electrical current produced in something that can be quickly charged and discharged multiple times without having to constantly be replaced. Batteries, and particularly lithium batteries, 
can hold a charge for long periods of time, but they can't be charged or discharged quickly. They also can be harmful to the environment. Lithium manufacturing produces all sorts of toxic waste, and recycling them means finding safe ways to dispose of their internal pollutants. Good lithium batteries might last you 5 to 10 years, but many capacitors last long enough to outlive you. They also aren't harmful to the environment, nor are they terribly expensive. They can be charged extremely fast and discharged instantly if necessary. The drawback is they can't currently hold as much of a charge as a battery, but in this case, that's irrelevant. The gravity generator could act as a constant charger for the capacitors, which could be connected to an inverter that you could run multiple electrical devices from. If you require more power, build a larger generator. If you only need one to power some peripherals on a camping trip, carry a smaller scale version along with you. On a side note, my computer froze up on me the other day while I was 3D modeling some of the parts for this project. Notice the exact time that it froze up. Seriously? One of life's little ironies. Since it happened, I could only run my computer in safe mode, and I couldn't access any of its normal functions. Sound, for example. After multiple attempts to rectify the problem, I discovered that it's something internal in the hardware, and I had to replace the computer. So it took me a little longer to complete this video than I would have liked, as I had to find a new computer to replace the old one, purchase it, and wait for it to arrive in the mail. I'm still setting things up on the new computer, but at least I'm back up and running. This is definitely the biggest and most ambitious project I've worked on for this channel, but also it has the advantage of being based on solid principles of mechanical advantage and grounded in proven methods for using gravity to transfer motion into storable energy. So it's not a matter of whether it'll work or not. Of course it will. It's a matter of how efficient I can build it and how much power it will produce the way I've designed it. I've been researching and designing this system for a couple months now, and I've already altered the design multiple times, and will probably keep doing so. When I started out, I was going to 3D print more of the parts, but opted to implement more solid parts to make the system more durable. Currently, the gears are mostly 3D printed, but should I find that they aren't strong enough to produce the results I desire, I may scrap them and replace them with metal gears. On the other hand, heavy weights can have an adverse effect on any gears. So, I've also designed a way to set up a gearbox using magnetic gears. I've only seen people use a maximum of two magnetic gears in most demonstrations I've seen online because you can't place multiple magnetic gears in close proximity of each other as the magnetic fields would affect each other. So, I almost ignored the idea of using them entirely. Then it occurred to me that you could simply connect the magnetic gears together in series with belts. That, of course, will place the stress on the belts and negate some of the advantage of using magnetic gears, but I believe it might produce a slight advantage over the wear that you would incur on using standard gears. I haven't done the experimentation to confirm or disprove that though, but I am sharing the 3D model of my design concept for magnetic gears anyway, in hopes that it may help inspire people to experiment with their own designs. For the alternator portion of the generator, I've been looking at different ways people have designed and built their own alternators for personal use rather than simply buying another wind alternator to use for this project. I've noticed that multiple people are using parts of recycled transformers from microwave ovens for the copper winding portion of the generators that they've built. Many microwave transformers are built to funnel 2000 volts or more through them. These are going to be downscaled as I'm only going to use the thicker part of the coil with part of the metal housing from the transformer and their only purpose will be to produce the electrical current. I've seen some pretty amazing results people have achieved by using two to four converted transformers. I'm considering using somewhere between eight and 16 for this project. And by the way, if you feel inspired to follow suit and build your own generator, please be careful if you choose to strip your own transformers out of broken or used microwave ovens. You have to discharge the capacitor before you do anything internally with a microwave, as the capacitor could hold a 2,000 volt charge. Jävlar i helvete! Which is enough to cause you serious harm. People die every year from improperly disassembling microwave ovens. I would also avoid the magnetron entirely. If you're unfamiliar with how microwaves work, that's the device that fires the microwaves into the food. People have accidentally irradiated themselves from improper handling of the magnetrons. 
Disassembling some of them is also hazardous as the materials they're made of are highly toxic. I watched a video of a gentleman improperly disassembling a microwave oven once and found myself cringing the entire time and concerned for his safety. So please do not put yourself in danger if you don't know what you're doing. Should you choose to salvage parts from a microwave, educate yourself first or ask an electrician to help you. This is the current design of the gearbox. Once I test it, I may decide to add more gears or tweak the current configuration. The way I'm planning to rewind the metal wire on the lead gear is either through a spring that functions similar to how the spring in a tape measure retracts, or simply suspend a lighter weight from a wire wrapped in the opposite direction on the other side of the main gear. As the main weight is returned to its start position, a counterweight will pull the gears back to their start position. The shaft that holds the weights will use linear bearings to hold the weight firmly in place. As the weights are lowered, they will pull a metal wire that's directly connected to the gears in the gearbox, as well as a secondary wire that runs through a pulley system I designed that should provide around 20 to 1 advantage when lifting the weight to its start position. I used bevel bearings that I had left over from another project for this setup, so if I find they aren't sufficient to hold the weight necessary, I'll simply redesign the bearing setup with a bigger bearing. The wire is rated to hold around 360 pounds, but I've also picked out some that can hold around 1,500 pounds in case I decide to redesign the system to hold more weight. The weight can be reset with a hand crank, but I currently have the system designed to reset using a small 12-volt motor, typically used in hand drills. Because of that, I have two different designs for the pulley system, one of which would provide more torque to lift the weight if necessary. There were two or three other versions of this that I've discarded, as I've already changed multiple parts of this entire design. The magnets I'm using for the rotor are 1 8 by 1 quarter by 2 inch. I'll be stacking them three magnets thick around the outer diameter of the rotor, as that seems to be the more efficient shape and style of magnets that I've seen used with converted microwave transformers. I already have what I need left over from a previous project. So that's the basic concept of the gravity generator as well as the most current version of the designs, and a look at many of the parts I've been purchasing and 3D printing. I plan to upload more information as I start assembling and testing parts of the generator, but this is the type of project that I believe is better presented in parts rather than one really long video. Thanks for watching, and do great things.